Gandhi complied. That is, Gandhiji followed the order that he was asked to. He was asked to return. He was asked to go back, and he followed the order and he returned he didn't proceed from there the messenger drove gandhi home uh, where he served him with an official notice to quit champaran immediately and then uh, he was uh, gandhiji was uh, driven home by the messenger that is the messenger took him to his home to his residence and there at his residence he was served with an official notice the messenger carried the official notice and that notice was said to him at his residence and that notice said by that notice Gandhiji had to leave Champaran immediately he had to leave that place soon that is presently Gandhi signed a receipt for the notice and wrote on it that he would disobey the order. Okay, order. So, Gandhiji, as per the custom, as per the system, had to put his signature as an acknowledgement of receipt, as an as as a receipt as a confirmation that he received the notice so he had to sign he put his signature and at the back of it on the back side of it he wrote that he would disobey that is he would defy the order he would violate the order in consequence Gandhi received a summon to appear in court the next day and as a result as a result of signing and then putting his remark on the back side of it he was asked to appear before the court for the violation of the uh, violation of the rules and he was asked to appear the next day very next day all night Gandhi remained away entire night entire night he remained away not because of the tension, because of the worries, but to take his preparation for the next day, to do his exercise, he stayed away. He took all the preparation, he did all the exercises needed, necessary for the, uh, for, uh, the case and also of to defend himself to defend his case in a better way he telegraphed Rajendra Prasad to come from Bihar with influential friends he telegraphed he sent message to Rajendra Prasad and asked him to come there with some influential with eminent personalities with are people who had uh, their influence over people at, in their field. He sent instructions to the ashram. He also sent instructions. I uh, gave instructions to the ashram people. And also he wired a full report to the Viceroy. And at the same time, he sent a full document, full report to the Viceroy giving every detail of the case morning found the town of Motihari black with peasants and the next morning as the news spread that Gandhiji was asked to appear before the court the people his well-wishers thronged the town of the town of Motihari from all over the place, from all over the place, from it, uh, from the surrounding areas and all, they did not know Gandhi's record in South Africa. They had no idea whose Gandhiji was. They had no idea of his uh, political background, his political profile, his 
political stature bad they knew that this man had come to their place to defend themselves to fight for their rights and so they thronged in big number uh, they did not know Gandhi, okay, but record in South Africa, what he, whatever he did in South Africa. Uh, they had merely heard that Mahatma, who wanted to help them, was in trouble with the authorities. They just got this piece of information that the Mahatma, who had come to their place, was in trouble with the authorities. Was uh, was bothered, was disturbed by the authorities, uh, and uh, and that he was there only for their sake, for their rights. Their spontaneous demonstration in thousands around the courthouse was the beginning of their liberation from the fear of the British and their spontaneous, natural, without without any instigation without any uh without any say inspiration stimulus or they spontaneously naturally they heard the voice of their soul and they moved towards the town of motihari and this demonstration this spontaneous natural demonstration in thousand they appeared there in thousand in a big crowd and their uh, demonstration around the courthouse because they thronged the town of Motihari and they uh, let the seas they demonstrated outside the courthouse was actually the beginning of their liberation their freedom from the fear of the British that was the that was the beginning of their freedom from the fear of the British. The officials felt powerless without Gandhi's cooperation in there as uh, they let cease. That is the people surrounded uh, the courthouse and they were not ready to move without, uh, without Gandhi G from that place. So, or the government officials uh, found themselves powerless. They were they were powerless there without Gandhi's cooperation, without Gandhi's assistance, without Gandhi's help. He helped them regulate the crowd. He was polite and friendly. He helped the officials to regulate, to control the crowd. And here, his his attitude, his behavior was polite. He was polite and friendly in his approach his approach was friendly and polite though he was uh, he was in a dominating position he could dominate the things he could control the things the way he wanted he could dictate the terms there, but he was polite and friendly. He was giving them concrete proof that uh, their might, hitherto dreaded and unquestioned, could be challenged by Indians. And he gave the officials, the Britishers, concrete proof, solid proof that their might, their might means their power, hitherto and questions and dreaded hitherto until now dreaded feared and unquestioned was not questioned by the uh, by the common by the common men could be challenged by Indians now they could challenge their might now the general public could challenge their mind, their power. The government was baffled. The government was defeated. Uh, the prosecutor requested the judge to postpone the trial and since uh, they were helpless, so uh, they asked the prosecutor who was supposed to who was supposed to fight the case against 
uh, Gandhiji requested the judge to defer, postpone, defer the trial. Apparently, the authorities wished to cancel their superiors and, and apparently, uh, very uh, clearly, the officials, the authorities, uh, officers wanted to cancel their superior in this case. Gandhi protested against the delay, but Gandhiji was not in favor of any kind of delay, a further delay in the case. He read a statement pleading guilty. Uh, he was involved. So he read a statement. He didn't want to uh, lengthen the case. So uh, he read a statement, and by that statement, he pleaded guilty, he requested guilty, he said that he was guilty, he was involved, he told the court in a conflict of duties and he said, he clarified that he was involved, he was engaged in a conflict of duty, uh, a conflict, that is a fight of duty, a fight between duties. On the one hand, not to set a bad example as a lawbreaker, on the other hand, to render the humanitarian and national service for which he had come. So, he didn't want to set a bad example as a lawbreaker. So, he followed the order of the government. But then, he had the other duty. And that duty was to render, give provide humanitarian and national service or uh, the service to or uh, the humanity and the service to the nation for which he had come there and for this only he had uh, he had been there to Motihari and in Champaran. He disregarded the order to leave not for want of respect for lawful authority. He, he cleared, he made things very clear that uh, he violated the order. It was not because he had any kind of disregard, no faith for the lawful authority, for the lawful installed authority, but in obedience to the higher law of our being, the voice of conscience, that he violated it for the higher law of the being, our being, that is uh, because he wanted to be truthful to the voice of conscience, and that is the voice of, of the heart, the soul. And that said that he should fight for the poor uh, and weak. He asks the penalty due and then he asks for the penalty from the judge. The magistrate announced that he would pronounce sentence after a two hour recess and asked Gandhi to furnish bail for those 120 minutes. So here the magistrate announced that he would pronounce, he would deliver his judgment, his sentence after a two our recess after the break of two hours and asked Gandhiji to furnish to provide bail for those 120 minutes to provide some kind of guarantee for those 120 minutes that he would not go away from there and he would stay and he would appear before the court. Gandhi refused. The judge released him without bail and Gandhiji refused. He said no I'm not going to pay any kind of bail. I want the punishment. I don't, I, I, I'm not going to furnish any kind of bail here. And ultimately he was released without bail and that too without bail. When the court reconvened, the judge said he would not deliver the judgment for several days. Meanwhile, he allowed Gandhi to remain at liberty. When the court reassembled, 
After two hours break, the judge announced that he was not going to deliver the judgment for several days, not only today, but for several days to come. Meanwhile, he allowed Gandhi to remain at liberty and uh, for the meantime, until the judgment was delivered, he allowed Gandhi to, to remain at liberty, allowed Gandhi to, to be at bay, to be free without any fear, without any legal fear of any legality or legal punishment later. Rajendra Prasad, Bridge Kishore Babu, Maulana Mazarul Haq, and several other prominent lawyers had arrived from Bihar. On Gandhiji's request, uh, Rajendra Prasad arrived there with uh, these eminent lawyers from Bihar. They conferred with Gandhi, that is, they discussed, they exchanged their thoughts, their ideas with Gandhi G. What would they do if he was sentenced to prison? Well, they discussed with Gandhi G as what would they do if he was arrested, if Gandhi G was arrested, and this question was asked by him only, by Gandhi G. Why? The senior lawyer replied, or they had come to advise and help him. If he went to jail, there would be nobody to advise and they would go home. So Gandhiji was very clever. He was very shrewd and he just wanted to know uh, their feeling, their reaction and their thought, or what they thought in their mind. So he wanted to get their reaction as well. So he asked this question, he tells this question and the reply came instantly and that if and what else on that answer came from a very senior lawyer, the senior most lawyer from there uh, among them and he said, well, we have come here to advise you and if you are gone, then we are left with no one to advise and in such situation, we would return home. What about the injustice to the sharecroppers? Gandhi demanded. And to this answer, Gandhiji wanted to know from him, wanted to know from all the lawyers, what about the injustice to the sharecroppers? Our purpose of arriving at this place our purpose of coming to this place coming over this place is only to alleviate and to elevate them out of this situation that is uh, to take them out of their injustice give them justice provide them justice the lawyers with you to consult Rajendra Prasad has recorded the upshot of their consultation and then quickly, instantly, they withdrew. They retreated, they went back and consulted again. And after that, it was not the senior most, uh, uh, the lawyer or the senior most person from them, but this time Rajendra Prasad registered his opinion and the thought of the group. He said they thought amongst themselves uh, that Gandhi was totally a stranger and yet he was prepared to go to prison for the sake of the peasants. Now they discussed and uh, what they discussed was Gandhiji was the stranger there, was outsider, he was a complete stranger there and yet he was ready to fight for the rights of uh, the deprived, the poor sharecroppers. If they, on the other hand, being not only residents of the adjoining districts, but also those who claim to have served the peasants, 
should go home, it would be shameful desertion. Now they said, or he said that, well, or he was stranger, and or they were the people who were very close to these peasants. They were the neighbors. They they were from the uh, uh, from the neighboring district, neighboring say neighboring district or neighboring town, neighboring area or surrounding area, and here comes a person who is complete stranger and who is ready to help these people. So if they go back home, and that would be a shameful thing and not only be a shameful thing but a shameful desertion leaving the poor sharecroppers to their piteous condition though they were the uh, lawyers the, they were their lawyers and they only were leaving them at their such condition so that would be shameful desertion they accordingly went back to Gandhi and told him they told him uh, they were ready to follow him into jail and accordingly they went back to Gandhi that is they they uh, they uh, came up to Gandhi and said that they were ready to follow him into jail that they were also ready to go to jail the battle of Champaran is won he exclaimed and instantly Gandhiji exclaimed shouted that the battle of Champaran is won no one can prevent us from getting this victory but then he took a piece of paper and divided the group into pairs and put down the order in which each pair was to court arrest now his next his next step in the next step he divided on uh, the group into pairs of two and then he noted down some instructions for each pair say or noted down the instruction on on the piece of paper divided it and gave it to all the pairs there and asked them to court arrest that is go and arrest yourself willingly for the injustice to to protest the injustice uh, that was done to the poor sharecroppers several days later Gandhi received a written communication from the magistrate informing him that the lieutenant governor of the province had ordered the case to be dropped and several days later that is uh, after uh, after a lot of days had gone by after a passing of a lot of days Gandhiji received a written communication uh, say he received a letter from the magistrate from the same magistrate the magistrate uh, of the Motihari uh, town and there and that later uh, in that letter by that letter it was informed that all the cases or say the case against him was dropped by the lieutenant governor <coughs> excuse me civil disobedience had triumphed the first time in modern India and that was the first time that the civil disobedience of that kind had won because never before uh, a crowd uh, of the people of India protested in that manner against the system against the government and that was the first victory of the civil disobedience that is or that is non-violent ways by adopting non-violent ways or uh, it was the victory of non-violent movement 
Gandhi and the lawyers now proceeded to conduct a far flung inquiry into the grievance of the farmers. And now, after getting relief, relief from the court, he and his team went to the villages or say or they proceeded or they had their next plan of action and according to that or they started conducting deep-rooted inquiry far, far flung inquiry deep-rooted inquiry into the uh, complaints of the farmers depositions by about 10,000 pieces were written down and the complaints written complaints the complaints had been written down by the lawyers and notes made on other evidences and uh, they also made prepared notes on other evidences that they provided to them documents were collected the whole area throbbed with the activity of the investigators and the vehement protests of the landlords and the whole the whole area came alive with the activities activities from the lawyers and also the activities of the landlords who were protesting against such action or such investigations in june gandhi was summoned to sir edward gave the latin governor and in june gandhi was summoned was was uh, say invited to sir edward gate who was the lieutenant governor of the province before he went he met leading associates and again laid detailed plans for civil disobedience if he should not return and before leaving before leaving for the office of the Latin governor he gave proper instructions he discussed with the lawyers and gave proper instruction to them as what to do in case he did not return he was arrested there he was sent to jail he was say he was put into jail and in such case what would they do what would be their um, plan of action gandhi had four protracted interviews with the lieutenant governor who as a result appointed an official commission of inquiry into the indigo sharecropper situation so uh, gandhi was summoned uh, to the office of lieutenant governor of the province uh, edward and there he had interviews exchange of thoughts exchange of ideas with the lieutenant governor <coughs> excuse me and this lasted for uh say this not only lasted but uh such meetings occurred uh for four times that is um on the four occasions on four different occasions Gandhiji was summoned to the office of the Latin governor and the Latin governor had a uh, talks with him and then as a result of these uh, interviews these talks uh, the governor Latin governor had appointed a commission of inquiry to investigate the uh, the condition and the situation of the sharecroppers because he was convinced that there was something wrong in it and that's why that's why someone had to come from uh, from such a distant place and not only that uh, because of some some reality in it that so many people gathered together at a place as it happened in Motihari uh, outside the court session court of Motihari district uh, say Champaran district, Motihari was the capital. The commission consisted 
of landlords, government officials, and Gandhi as the sole representative of the peace. And so here, uh, uh, this commission was set up, and it included members from each and every group. Each and every group had its representative to the commission, the stakeholders, all these stakeholders were represented in the commission. So the landlords were there, uh, then the government officials were there, and uh, from the peasant side, uh, they were represented by Gandhiji. Gandhi remained in Champaran for an initial uninterrupted period of seven months and then again for several shorter visits. Okay, so Gandhiji remained in Champaran. He came there on the request of a peasant, Rajkumar Sukla, and there he stayed there uninterrupted. For uninterrupted period of seven months that is for long seven months he stayed there uninterrupted without leaving this place that is from Calcutta he reached Champaran and as he reached there from Calcutta after that he stayed there for seven months at a stretch and then again for several shorter visits and then again he made several shorter visits to this place the visit undertaken casually on the entreaty of an unlettered peasant in the in the expectation that it would last a few days occupied almost a year of Gandhi's life now what happened is the, the visit that was undertaken uh, the visit of Champaran was undertaken on the request of Rajkumar Sukla, a peasant from Champaran, and he thought, Gandhiji thought that uh, this visit would last only for a few days. He'd go, he would find the situation, he would make his uh, planning and all, he'll, he would discuss things with the uh, people there, and then he would return. But that did not happen. He remained there for seven long months at a stretch so that all happened with an entreaty with an uh, with a request from a peasant and that occupied almost one year of Gandhi's life that is or that simple request of a peasant took one year of Gandhi's life and to remove the problem that he came that he came up with with the hope that Gandhiji would do something for them and that took one year to remove that problem the official inquiry assembled a crushing a crushing mountain of evidence against the big planters and when they saw this this they agreed in principle to make refunds to the peasants now the official inquiry or the official commission assembled gathered a crushing a heavy mountain of evidence that is they collected a lot of evidence against the big planters that is the landlords and when they saw this they agreed and when they found that they were trapped they were uh, they were found out with their with their problems with their wrongdoings they agreed in principle they agreed to make refunds to the peasants they agreed that yes we're ready for the refunds of the amount that we collected illegally from the peasants but how much must we pay the ox county but the question then came how much would or uh, how much should they pay to the peasants they thought he would demand 
repayment in full of the money which they had illegally and deceitfully extorted from the sharecroppers and they thought they thought they believed that Gandhiji would demand 100% refund of the 100% repayment, 100% refund of the amount that they illegally, unlawfully, and deceitfully, or that they unlawfully and in a in a way that involves cheating that they cheated them and collected money from them so uh, they thought that uh, they had to make 100% uh, refund of the amount to the sharecroppers he asked only 50% but then he asked only 50% Gandhiji demanded only 50% of refund there he seemed adamant writes Reverend J. Z. Hodge, a British missionary in Champaran who observed the entire episode at close range. Now, as they asked how much should they pay, Gandhiji said 50%. He demanded 50%, though they thought that he would demand 100% because, because uh, uh, they were, that as Gandhiji was, uh, say, on the dominant position, he could he could uh, dominate the situation. He could ask hundred percent, but he only asks fifty percent of refund. And there he seemed adamant, and there he seemed very much firm, very much steadfast, determined to to get fifty percent of refund to the farmers. And uh, this is written by. The, that is, this account is presented by uh, J. Z. Hodge, Reverend J. Z. Hodge, a British missionary in Champaran. That is, uh, there was a British missionary in Champaran who was also uh, involved in this case, had written all these things. That he was adamant, and his uh, he seemed to be adamant in his demand of 50%. Uh, because he saw all these things in the, at close quarters, from the close quarters, uh, very closely. Maybe he was part of this commission. Thinking probably that he would not give way the representatives of the planters offer to refund to the extent of 25%. And as they thought that uh, he would not give way, that is, he would not give in his demand of 50%, they offered... Uh, the refund to the extent of 25% only and to his amazement that is the representative of the planters offered this and to his amazement Mr. Gandhi took him at his word thus breaking the deadlock and to his amazement to the amazement of the representative of the uh, planters Gandhiji accepted their offer and said, yes, it's fine. You want to return 25%? That's fine. And he was so amazed, so puzzled. And thus it broke the deadlock. Thus uh, both the sides agreed to come at certain conclusion, at certain agreement. This settlement was adopted unanimously by the Commission and the settlement was adopted that is uh, the Commission accepted this agreement uh, by which both the sides agreed to agreed upon uh, the refund. Gandhi explained that the amount of the refund was less important than the fact that the landlords had been obliged to surrender part of the money and with it part of their prestige. Okay, so Gandhi later explained, explained it later that it was not the amount of money to be refunded but the prestige that the prestige 
that they surrendered before the peasants was important because earlier they were the lords and they were the supreme power and now as they made refund of 25 percent that is they surrendered before the peasants so that was more important to Gandhiji than the refund therefore as far as the peasants were concerned the planters had behaved as lords above the law and so long or the planters behaved as lords and are they behaved as if they were above the law now the peasants saw that the that he had rights and defenders he learned courage and now the peasants found that well or uh, they had the rights they had the uh, they had the rights and they had the defenders they had the people standing beside them people who were ready to support who were ready to defend their rights and so he learned courage and so on uh, that that get lot of courage lot of power and stamina to the to the peasants so even justified Gandhi's position within a few years the British planters abandoned their states which reverted to the peasants now Gandhiji could properly analyze could properly evaluate the situation and as he demanded as he agreed not demanded but as he agreed upon 25% of refund to the peasants by that he knew that the landlords would submit their pride and submitting the pride was more important than the money than the monetary benefit that the peasants were going to get so his evaluation his his analysis of the situation proved correct and within few years the landlords abandoned they left their large states large farmlands and went away from there so as they went away from there the entire land that the peasants were working that the peasant or that the peasants were tenant of the entire land reverted went back to the peasants now they were the re, they had become the real owner of their land now and with that as are the planters British planters moved away from there so with that we we'll, with the leaving on those farmlands or the sharecropping agreement or the sharecropping practice had disappeared altogether and it was a great relief for the peasants Gandhi never contented himself with large political or economic solutions but Gandhiji was not satisfied completely with the political or with the economical gain that the peasants had received he saw the cultural and social backwardness in Champaran villages and wanted to do something about it immediately so not only did he find that they were backward that they were economically backward uh, socially backward culturally backward now since they achieved the economic benefit in the form of becoming the owner of their lands so the economic part was uh, say solved they got the benefit uh, from the economic side now side now so now it was to tune in their social and cultural aspect cultural and social backwardness they were socially backward they were culturally backward there was no education there was uh, no knowledge of how to how to maintain 
hygiene and all. So Gandhiji noticed these two things and thought of working on these issues after getting the economic advantage or economic benefit for uh, the peasants. He appealed for teachers, Madhav Desai and Narhari Parikh, two young men who had just joined Gandhi as disciple and their wives volunteered for the work. So he wanted the volunteers for this work because he could not teach all the villagers together at a time. So uh, for that he needed the help of volunteers and for this work Narhari Parik and Madhav Desai. These two followers of Gandhiji who had just joined, recently joined, who had just become Gandhiji's uh, followers, they volunteered their services. They Not only they, but even their wives joined their husbands in this social work and they volunteered their services. Several more came from Bombay, Pune, and other distant parts of the land. Not only these four people, but many more also joined this work. Many more also joined, also volunteered their work. And this time they, uh, they came from all over the land, all over the places. Uh, people coming from the volunteers coming there from Bombay, from Pune, and from all over the land. Devdas, Gandhi's youngest son, arrived from the ashram and so did Mrs. Gandhi. Now, Gandhi's youngest son, Devdas, too, joined the work. He too volunteered his services. Not only that, even Gandhi's wife, Mrs. Uh, Kasturba, that is, even Kasturba by join Gandhiji in the social work. Okay, now primary schools were open in six villages. Kasturbai taught the ashram rules on personal cleanliness and community sanitation. Now uh, they opened six schools in six villages, in six different villages. And besides this, uh, schools were running now. Besides this, uh, they had to be taught about, they had to be uh, made aware of the cleanliness um, in their life, how to adapt cleanliness in their life. And that work was volunteered by Kasturbai. And she taught ashram rules, the rules that was a practice, that were practiced in ashram, all those rules were taught to the villagers especially the women there how to keep themselves clean how to uh, maintain sanitation and, uh, and hygiene uh, how to how to uh, practice these things hygiene and sanitation health conditions were miserable health conditions were very poor in villages Gandhi got a doctor to volunteer his services for six months since the health conditions were very poor in the villages there were no doctor there was no health center so Gandhiji got a doctor to volunteer his services for six months three medicines were available castor oil quinine and sulfur ointment and there with the doctor and their dispensary only three medicines were present that are castor oil, castor oil, quinine and sulfur ointment. These three medicines were only available there in the, in the uh, dispensaries. Anybody who showed a coated tongue was given a dose of castor oil. So anyone who had uh, some problem related to tongue so uh, he was given a dose of castor oil anybody with malaria fever received quinine 
plus castor oil and one who showed signs of malaria fever was given uh, quinine plus besides quinine was also given castor oil anybody with skin eruptions received ointment plus castor oil and uh, people with skin eruptions skin related problems diseases and they received ointment and castor oil with that so castor oil was common in all the diseases was given in all the diseases all kind of all kind of uh, situations and all kind of conditions Gandhi noticed the filthy state of women's clothes he asked Kasturbai to talk to them about it now Gandhiji noticed he kept a close eyes on the villagers and the way they led their life now Gandhiji found that the women in the villages were they were filthy saris or they uh, uh, they led they led their life uh, in a very dirty way so or uh, say uh, what is said here the filthy state of women's clothes the clothes used to be very filthy very dirty he asked Kasturbai to talk to them about it and then he asked Kasturbai his wife to talk to these women about their dirty clothes one woman took Kasturba into her hut and said, Look, there is no box or cupboard here for clothes. Now, one of the women, when she tried to talk to a women of the village or women of the villages, oh, one of the women asked Kasturba to come along with her and she took her to her house and there she showed all the things she showed see she said see oh, there is no cupboard in the house look there is no box no cupboard here for clothes no cupboard there no box there for clothes the sari i am wearing is the only one i have and then she informed that the sari that she was wearing that she wore was the only one she had there was no second sari and that's why it it always remained dirty during his long stay in Champaran Gandhi kept a long distant watch on the ashram and during his long stay since he stayed there for almost a year so he kept a close eye, keen eye on ashram activities. He had to give instructions to uh, the people living in ashram. The ashram inmates were giving, given instruction from there only. He sent regular instructions by mail and asked for financial accounts. He gave regular instructions to the inmates of the ashram and he also asked for financial accounts he asked for uh, the accounts of the finances that is the money that was coming and how uh, that was spent all the accounts are related to money as well once he wrote to the residents that it was time to fill in the old latrine trenches and dig new ones otherwise the old ones would begin to smell bad and once he passed some instruction from uh, Champaran only and said to fill the old latrine pit and dig new one because if that is not done soon uh, then in the in that case in that scenario in that situation the old one uh, would smell bad that would uh, give foul smell that would sting the Champaran episode was a turning point in Gandhi's life 
What I did, he explained, was a very ordinary thing. So he looks back, he looks back at the thing, and he realizes that that was the turning point in his life. Why? Because that was the first major step taken by him towards his attempt to liberate the country. And that's why that particular event of Jamparan holds a special place in the heart of Gandhi. So what? how he analyzes the whole thing. He says, what I did was a very ordinary thing. He says that, well, whatever I did there was a very ordinary thing. That was a very simple thing. I declare that the British could not order me about in my own country and there. There in Champaran, he declared, he simply declared a thing. That is, he declared means that was his conviction. That he decided, that he uh, made a point that in his own country, uh, the British, the outsiders cannot, cannot order him about. The outsider, the British cannot dictate terms in his own country. But Champaran did not begin as an act of defiance. How he analyzes it, he says that uh, Champaran did not begin as an act of defiance, as an act of opposition, as an act of uh, going against the system. It grew out of an attempt to alleviate the distress of large number of poor peasants. How it all started, he says here, that it grew out of an attempt. He tried to make an attempt to alleviate, to remove, to lessen, to bring down the distress, the pain, the uh, problems of the large number of poor peasants. He wanted to help the poor peasants of Champaran and, and it all started from uh, with that very feeling. And this was the typical Gandhi pattern. His politics were intertwined with the practical day-to-day -day problems of the millions. And that was the typical Gandhi style, typical style of Gandhiji, typical pattern, typical style uh, that he followed all over the world. He did it here, he did it there in South Africa even. So what was his, uh, what was his uh, policy philosophy? Uh, his philosophy was to interwine, that is to mix politics with practical day-to-day -day problems of the millions. Politics was mixed with the day-to-day -day problems of the millions. That is, uh, for him, politics was not a means to raise himself to a certain position. It was not to become a figure. But politics, to him, was a means to Remove the problems from the life of people, millions of people. His was not a loyalty to abstraction. For him, politics was not some kind of loyalty that you're showing loyalty or that you're following something abstract, that I want to be a leader. It was not a kind of thing like that. I want to be a leader and it's simply a person simply chases that dream that uh, since he wishes to be a leader so he changes a, a dream which is uh, which is not there which has no solid base for him it was it was to connect himself politics with day-to-day -day life it was a loyalty to living human beings and his loyalty was to the living human beings. He was loyal 
he was sincere his feeling was there for the poor people or say the for the human being he had empathy for the people and because of that feeling only he served the humankind in everything Gandhi did moreover he tried to mold a new free Indian who could stand on his own feet and thus make India free so his was also a try to mold to shape a new free India that is to mold to shape are the Indians the people of this country who could stand on their own who could stand on their own who could be dependent who could do things on their own and thus make and you're free if you are dependent on your own you're not dependent on others or you are free you need not you need not bow before others so in that case you're free if you don't have any needs any requirements you'll not go before the others and you'll not beg to him for a thing so he wanted to make Indians self-reliant self-sufficient early in the Champaran action Charles Freer Andrews the English pacifist who had become a devoted follower of the Mahatma came to bid Gandhi farewell before going on a tour of duty to the fizzy islands so earlier and the earlier part of, of the Champaran movement some Charles Freer Andrews who was an Englishman and also a pacifist who believed in non-violence who believed in settling uh, settling something some dispute peaceful by peaceful means had become a devoted follower of the Mahatma and he had become a devoted uh, ardent supporter believer and follower of Gandhiji now he came to bid Gandhi farewell before going on a tour of duty to the Fizzy Island and now he came there to Gandhiji and he came there to say him goodbye before he went on a tour of duty to Fizzy Islands that is uh, he was sent there he was uh, he was deputed say he was sent there uh, for a period of time for a certain period of time for duty that is uh, it's uh, some kind of thing that uh, um, people are sent um, on deputation that is they are deputed for a certain period of time to work at a particular place so he was also assigned this task to work there in Fizzy Island for a period of time so before leaving he wanted to meet and he wanted to say goodbye to Gandhiji and that's why he reached ashram there Gandhi's lawyer friends thought it would be a good idea for Andrews to stay in Champaran and help them and they thought when he came there he had he had talks with Gandhiji's lawyer friends like uh, previously mentioned Rajendra Prasad uh, Maulana Mazarul Pak and some bridge uh, some uh, something like that there so he talked to them and they expressed the opinion they thought that his staying in India would be a nice thing for them that would help them that would benefit them in a great way so that was their uh, that was their thought and they expressed their thought before uh, Andrews 
Andrews was willing if Gandhi agreed, and Andrews too was ready to stay back in India, was, he was ready to work here in India only, if only Gandhiji agreed, he also had the same thought and he wanted him to stay in India. But Gandhi was vehemently opposed, but Gandhiji was completely against of it. He said, you think that in this unequal fight, it would be helpful if we have an Englishman to our side. So uh, he explained them that it was a fight between two unequal forces. The British were so powerful, the Indians were so poor, so weak. So it was a fight between two unequal forces and in such a case it was never a good idea to have an Englishman to their side for their help because that would morally that would be in a way say morally not good morally that would cause some kind of dent so he was not in favor of this idea. This shows the weakness of our heart and he said that it shows the weakness of our heart that we are not, we are not sufficient. We are not able. We are not able to take away our rights and that we need some support of an Englishman to achieve our rights. Or this or the cause is just and you must rely upon yourselves to win the battle. The cause is just. We are fighting for a just cause, a right cause. Where fight is not not against the right persons, against the right system, against the right thing. A fight is against the wrong things and or the wrong persons, those who were causing problems, those who were unleashing atrocities upon the Indians, upon their men. So they had to fight and they had to win this battle on their own. Gandhiji suggested in that way. You should not seek a prop in Mr. Andrews because he happens to be an Englishman and you should not seek the support, seek help from a prop in. Prop in means one who emerges uh, from somewhere. So he is, he comes from nowhere. He is not an Indian. So we should not uh, take his support, take his help in our fight because he is an he is an Englishman. He had read our minds correctly, and uh, the lawyer friends admit they say later that he read our minds correctly. Gandhi, did you read our minds correctly? Rajendra Prasad commands. And we had no reply, and and they had no reply against Gandhiji's remark. Gandhi, in this way, taught us a lesson in self-reliance, and in this way, he gave them a lesson in self-reliance, in self-sufficiency. Self-reliance, Indian independence, and help to share croppers were all bound together all these things all these items self-reliance being self-sufficient indian independence and help to share croppers all were bound together all were interconnected so this is how we have come to an end and with this the chapter also gets over so this is all thank you